All right, it's Josh Vigar from Android Authority, and here we are at the Sony launch event here at E-Flight in Berlin 2014. And here we have an entry level, it's probably the way, best way you can describe it, entry level Xperia smartphone in the Xperia E3. Now, the E3 right here does have uh, quite a bit of the same type of design language that you would have in the Xperia line of smartphones anyway. You have that rounded look that was uh, mostly introduced in the Z3, and it still has a pretty thin profile all around, but it is a smaller offering, as you can see. I'm really grasping it pretty easily in my hand right here. Uh, but it still does have quite a few of the same design language choices around here, like the big silver power button and the volume rockers right underneath it. Now, these phones do still have the same IP certification, so you will be able to douse this thing and drop it and not get any dust inside either. It will get pretty much the same type of protection that all of the other Xperia phones have. But aside from that, a lot of these specifications are going to get a bit of a bump down. What we have here is a 4.5 inch screen that comes in at 854 by 480 resolution. And uh, it does really kind of show here. You will get the sense that this is definitely not anywhere close to a 1080p display, obviously. Uh, but it really does kind of show that this is the entry level version of the Xperia line. And that's perfectly fine because it should come in at a much more affordable price point as well. And is more accessible in plenty of other markets. As far as the actual uh, performance goes, you have the Snapdragon 400 on the inside, which comes in at 1.2 gigahertz. And from there, the Adreno 305 graphics, along with one gigabyte of RAM. Now you are going to get up to uh, four gigabytes of memory inside of here, but you will also be able to have 32 gigabytes in a micro SD card. Underneath the surface, we will also get a 2,330 milliamp hour battery, but if you look in the settings right here, we still get the same power management options that are available to really get the best out of this battery and really provide the best longevity that is possible. You have the stamina mode, the low battery mode, and even more in order to make this phone possibly last as long as maybe three days or so. Now, as far as the software experience goes, you still get the Xperia UI that brings a lot of the features that you've come to expect from the Xperia smartphones already. You get the same sort of motif around here with the home screens, the app drawer, and the recent app screen, which is where you have one of the mainstays of the Xperia UI, and that is, that, those are the small apps. Now, these are just small overlays that go on top of your current workspace that allow you to get very small tasks done, like let's say this calculator that is right here, and they are easily accessible from the recent app screen and are easy to use on top of everything that you're already doing. All right, let's go ahead and jump on over to the back and we have that camera. Now we are looking at a five megapixel rear shooter and you will see that there is no dedicated camera button, which is a little bit of a bummer, but the camera experience otherwise should be pretty similar only it will have a lower resolution. I do have the viewfinder up here already and we're taking a look at that. You do have a, quite a few of the modes that are available on the other uh, phones already, including the AR effect and the creative effect as well. But if we look at the actual settings on here, you'll see that right now we're on a video mode. Let's move over to the photo mode. You'll see that we have five megapixels for a four by three resolution and then 3.7 at a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So that, those are the sort of uh, settings that you will be able to have when it comes to this camera. Now we imagine it's going to be a pretty decent camera for five megapixels as Sony does a pretty good job with their camera optics. But in reality, what we're looking at here is just an easy way of getting into the Xperia line without really uh, sacrificing too much of the quintessential Xperia style and experience. We do get a great uh, design language here that provides a lot of what you would see in the Xperia Z3 and its subsequent uh, other iterations, but this time in a much more affordable and a much more accessible package for those of you who don't need to be on the bleeding edge in order to enjoy what you have on your smartphone.